Today we're going to talk about Ernie Taylor, possibly one of the most iconic British bodybuilders of all time, certainly in the same league of, of uh, Dorian Yates to an extent. Now, what's special about Ernie Taylor? Ernie Taylor was probably the first pro bodybuilder that really got me into bodybuilding. Now, I, re I remember being 17 years old in the United Kingdom and I went to buy my first ever Flex magazine so I could learn about bodybuilding, so I could see what I needed to do to get started. And it must have been 2001, and it was back whenever Ernie was competing at the British Grand Prix. And also, as, as many uh, may remember, the iconic Night of Champions competition as well. Now, he, he had some pretty decent placings. He had some mid, middle of the range of placings, but some of them were actually pretty good. But let's keep in mind, he was up against some of the IFBB's Hall of Fame bodybuilders. Dexter Jackson, Tom Prince, Gunter Schleerkamp, uh, a young early Jay Cutler. Now, at the Night of Champions, he came in the seventh place, which wasn't too bad, but it wasn't great either. When you take about, you think about 1998, when Ernie Taylor was able to come in to Mr. Olympia at an eighth place. So he, at one stage in his career, he was near enough able to break into the top five at the, the, the biggest bodybuilding competition in the world. So he was certainly capable of higher placings. Ernie at the time had an article in Flex magazine in which he would answer readers' questions that he had mailed in. Uh, and I have to admit, I did mail in a couple of questions myself. I can't even remember what it was, but uh, they were probably about diet at the time. I do, I do remember that there. Now, this is where I would have learned a lot of the early foundations. Now, this is 2001, so bodybuilding.com was, eh, was kind of a lot smaller than what it was now, what it grew into. And at the time, I didn't really have a computer at home, so I didn't have the internet at home. So most of what I learned, the same as most people I knew in the gym, everything was through Flex Magazine, Muscular Development, and of course, training alongside a lot of competition bodybuilders, some of whom went on to compete at the, uh, the Universe competition and other local shows, for example. Now, it would have been... The main part of Flex Magazine for me would have been going into the store, picking it up, and I would have went straight to the Ernie Taylor section just to see his advice, just to see what people were asking. Because the people who were writing in were normal working guys who were working, you know, blue-collar jobs, maybe in a warehouse, mechanics, regular folk. And they weren't able to eat every two, three hours of full meal, etc. And it was from there you learned some uh, techniques on how to actually plan your meals, how to meet your macros, what sort of calories to get, you know, just how, how to work around your diet, the basics of your diet. Now, I was a huge, huge fan of Ernie to the point that I actually sent him a letter to uh, Temple Gym, which most people are going to remember. Temple Gym in Birmingham was owned by... In my view of bodybuilding, the most iconic bodybuilding to ever walk the earth, Dorian Yates. Now, I used to lay in bed at night and dream about going to Temple Gym. It was the mecca of British bodybuilding, if not Western European bodybuilding. It was a mecca. Now, sadly, Ernie's placings never really got beyond middle tier groupings. He, he did come second in, in the English Grand Prix in 2003, which was a phenomenal uh, achievement. When you consider that the person who did come first went on to become Mr. Olympia, that was, of course, Jay Cutler. Now, Ernie, for a number of years, was uh, plagued by comments, criticisms that his triceps were obviously enhanced with sight enhancement oil, synthol pump and pose. <laughs> now, whether or not that is true or not, you have to remember that his triceps were the equivalent of Tom Platt's legs within bodybuilding. Now, there is some footage here, which I can show, in which Dorian Yates uh, points out about Ernie's triceps. And he was saying, you know, he remembers Ernie Taylor from way back in the day when he first started in his first competitions. And in the eyes of Dorian Yates, his triceps were a genetical focal point. Of course, Ernie's known for his outstanding tricep development. And a lot of people are... Uh asking does he have uh, implants in there or something like that and I can tell you I saw Ernie in his first contest when he weighed about 180 pounds and it was all triceps 
So it's just a, a genetic thing that he has, unusually large triceps. But he's kind of toned them down a little bit now. I think he's got a lot of criticism and he's, he's been listening to that. Well, you know now, there's no point, Glendy. It doesn't matter. He doesn't compete anymore. He was a great bodybuilder at the time. Uh, it, it is kind of sad to not see him on the stage anymore. It's been years since we've seen him. It's been since, well, 2003. It's now 2017. And it would be nice to see Ernie go on to uh, get higher places and obviously continue his career. I'm not too sure what happened to him. I believe that there was a, 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 an accident, a motorbike accident, whatever. Um, but certainly wanted to put this video out just to share the fact that Ernie Taylor was a phenomenal bodybuilder. And for many of us who grew up in, in the UK, uh, he, he was a, a motivational factor to us. It got us into bodybuilding. Anyway, so uh, thank you for watching the video. And I'm sure we're going to have some more great videos coming up in the future. We're going to have a look at some of the other classic bodybuilders who don't really seem to get as much of the limelight nowadays. So hit the like button. Give a subscribe and uh, stay tuned for future videos.